Well, thank you very much for having me here this afternoon. I really appreciate the opportunity to plug my tax bill. <laughs> um, and in order to spice it up a little bit, I, I did also bring a video that someone had prepared, not at my urging, but it's very interesting because, as Lael can attest, when I was a high school teacher, I always tried to incorporate videos into the classroom. And so when I received the video in my email, I immediately started grading it. And I thought, well, <laughs> if you started out with a wider shot and then moved in, but then my staff said, no, no, you're, you know. <laughs> this, it's, so I really am pleased to, to also be sharing um, a video with you. Um, the news I have to share at first is not good news, but I'll end up with on a lighter note uh, with, with my bill, which I hope solves all the problems that I talk about at the beginning, or, or some of them. <laughs> um, in the Finance Committee a few weeks ago, we uh, had a guest from the National Council of State Legislators, uh, Michael Byrd, who is the senior uh, Federal Affairs Counsel for NCSL. And what Michael testified to in the Finance Committee, he himself called frightening. Uh, Michael talked about the federal deficit that we face. He said that Alaska will begin seeing a 9% decline in our federal uh, contributions to the state. That will start now. It will continue at that level, possibly reaching 15% decline. Uh, we, we're already seeing that in the legislature. We have a bill, or there's a bill moving through the process because the federal government is not uh, funding 10 million in immunizations. Other areas we'll see cuts include education, employment and training, defense, and others. And so this, you know, this news is, is really disturbing and of course it's in some ways expected because of the deficit. And as you all know, the federal contributions uh, to our economy are one-third of our state's economy. I don't know if, how many of you are familiar with Scott Goldsmith from the Institute of Social and Economic Research and his uh, three-legged stool image of our economy. One-third is federal spending. One-third is directly or indirectly related to the oil industry. And then one-third is other. So in terms of the third related to the oil industry, we're also seeing a decline in that industry, a 6% decline. Uh, and as you know, there's essentially three corporate taxpayers in that industry that fund 90% of our state's government, our budget. Um, additionally, um, we've learned in the House Finance Committee that at the current rate that the state's budget is growing, we will be in a deficit situation in fiscal year 2015, and we will have depleted our cash reserves by the year 2025. Um, so that day I called my husband and said, how was your day? Because <laughs> I could use a, a little uplifting, you know, to find out how my sons were doing. And he said, well, you know, I went to school today to pick up Andrew John, and his teacher came out of the school, and she's followed by the band of first graders behind her. And, you know, my husband's there to pick up our son. And as the teacher gets closer to my husband, she's holding a Ziploc plastic bag with liquid in it. And she gets to Andrew, and she hands him the bag, and she says, here, hold this. And then she says, oh, and by the way, if it explodes, let me know. So we laughed at that, and I said, well, you know, in reality, our days weren't too different because what we learned in house finance is that Alaska will be held holding the bag. Um, and in that case, of course, my husband was holding the bag. The bag turned out to be one of my son's classmates' science experiment, and uh, my husband ended up taking it home, and the kid ended up on the bus, and I don't know how that happened, but um, it, it was an interesting, interesting situation. So the news that we're facing is not good news. Uh, if you came to House Finance and you sat and listened, you would hear people asking for money, for programs that all sound uh, wonderful, but in the back of our minds we have this dark cloud and we're constantly thinking how are we going to provide for a future, for future generations with this kind of information that we're dealing with, with 
with two sectors of our economy in duress and with no real good news in the immediate future. And I might add, by the way, that the decline in the production in oil is not because there isn't oil in the ground. There's as much there uh, as was uh, known when um, Prudhoe Bay was discovered. So it's, it's technically challenged oil. And there are those of us who are in the camp that believe that our tax structure is simply uh, a disincentive to, to producing that oil. Um, so today I'm here to talk about my bill, House Bill 252. And what this bill is focused on is that other third of our economy that, that, I, that I didn't talk about earlier, which is everything else. So you've got timber, tourism, all the different industries in Alaska that many of you actually find yourself a, a part of. And what my bill does is it taps into innovation and, and, a, and growing new industries in Alaska that we currently do not have here right now. Um, one thing that economists will agree on, and actually uh, President Truman said once that he wished he could, wished he could find a two-handed economist because they'd always say, well, on one hand there's this and on the other hand there's that. They can never agree. Uh, but economists do agree when it comes to innovation. And what they say is that innovation is the single most important driver of economic growth. And I mean, that, that to me is, is an important thing to keep in mind as we move forward and try to face some of these issues that we're facing in Alaska, which are very serious issues. So what my bill does is it tries to encourage innovation and bring new, new business into Alaska that currently is not here. So House Bill 252 is a tax bill. It exempts small qualifying businesses from our state's corporate income tax, which is the fifth highest in the country at 9%, 9.4%. It exempts companies while they're small and starting. And then as they reach, a, a lot, when they reach 50 million in gross aggregate assets, then they, the, the corporate income tax will kick in. It dovetails with um, Obama's federal stimulus package in the sense that uh, it, it piggybacks on what's called a 1202C corporation. His uh, legislation was trying to encourage investment in certain types of companies. And the way the federal law works is that it will exempt an investor from the corporate, um, from the capital gains tax if you invest in certain comp qualifying companies and you keep your money there for at least five years. So on the federal side, it's trying to drive the investment dollars in certain kinds of companies. The comp so what we're doing in Alaska, we would be the first state in the country to actually pass, if, if this bill were to pass, we'd be the first state in the country to have legislation like this. And what we do is we take a companies who, who are qualifying 1202C companies, if they are in Alaska and doing work here, then we exempt them from our corporate income tax until they reach a certain level. And it's, it's an exciting prospect because uh, we do want to attract new business to Alaska. And it's, and it's important as we educate our young people. And you know, you think about the first graders in my son's class, they're, they're amazing. I mean, some of the science projects they did um, included, I have a list here, I asked his teacher for the list. And I'm sure I'm the only parent who got a sneak preview of it. But some of the things that our first graders are doing in Anchorage include uh, studying a tornado in a jar. My son built a, a model of the lunar cycle and he's trying to um, identify how uh, gravity will affect an orbiting planet. And that project was built in our living room and was made it kind of a mess. But you know, anything for the sake of young kids learning, especially my son. Um, also being studied in his class, one of the kids is using UAA's cold room to determine what temperature water freezes. And so you think about what we're trying to do in our schools across the state. You know, young people are natural innovators. It, you can't stop them from innovating. I mean, my son will spend all day trying to figure out the best way to trick his younger brother. You know, I'm, it's, a, it's a natural thing that we do. And then when our kids get into high school and college and graduate, I feel that it's our responsibility to create an economic environment so that they can stay here and use their good ideas here and start businesses here in Alaska. So that's what my bill does. Um, the qualifying businesses 
uh, it's a very stringent requirement. So it is really attracting businesses that have to do with intellectual property and, um, and, and businesses that use 80% of their working assets every single day. So a lot of the industries in the state don't apply, but at the same time, there's a growing industry out there. And these are businesses that can be housed anywhere in the world. So they aren't necessarily geographic in nature, and they can start up anywhere. So by dovetailing with the federal law and creating a law in Alaska that would exempt these kinds of companies from our uh, corporate income tax, I think would be a really good start. I really feel that we have a responsibility to really shine a light on that other third of our economy that is not affected by oil, that is not affected by the federal dollars, and start to diversify our economy and, and create an environment where young people can stay here and raise their families here and have a future here. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, take a moment and share this video. Uh, I think that we had a newsworthy moment the other day in the Capitol. Uh, this young man Skyped in from Romania to testify on the bill. I think it was 3.09 in the morning his time. And I do believe actually that this video is the first time ever that somebody has testified in the Alaska legislature via video. But I don't want to get that out there too far because then we'll have everybody <laughs> testifying via video. But I did want to share this, share this video with you. I'm Tyler Barlow. Join me in my support for House Bill 252, which would make it easier for startups to call Alaska home. My current startup, Simply Social, brings together a global team, co-founders of a 1202C corporation based in Alaska. And while we may be global, we act local. And our state, unfortunately, has one of the highest state corporate income tax rates in the country. House Bill 252 would not only remove this burden, but would strengthen our global competitiveness by waiving the state tax rate for like-minded tech startups and high-growth companies. We chose to incorporate in Alaska partly because it's my home, but also because we were able to attract nine local accredited angel investors who chose to pay it forward in mentoring and funding us. We hope that our lawmakers will be equally supportive. So join me in not only watching this video, but sharing your support for House Bill 252. Thanks. My name is Ted Arnold, and I'm a 19-year-old entrepreneur born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska. Part of why I can't testify for House Bill 252 in person gets back to when I started my first IT business shortly after my 16th birthday. That's when I started Tyler Systems, doing a web development for advertising agencies around the country. After a while, business started to do well, and I began to seek the help and assistance of local mentors. Alaska has been incredibly kind to me, providing an active learning experience to my supporters and investors there. I'm currently in Romania working on my next startup called Simply Social, building social media software. I'm here with my co-founders Yudong Irene from the Netherlands and Valentin Bora from Romania. Together, we're all excited about the prospect of House Bill 252, which would make Alaska one of the most attractive places in the country to launch a startup. At the end of April, we plan to come back to my home state to launch our product to the public there and use Alaska as a launch pad to the rest of the country. As I travel and talk to business owners and leaders from around the world, they always ask me, what's next for Alaska? I'd love to tell them that we're encouraging innovation and high-tech development, that we're a state filled with dreamers looking to grow and achieve. And there are skeptics who say it is impossible, but I disagree. There was Wally Hickel who said, I was a carpenter working with my hands. I didn't have an education, but I had a vision. I think that with our great outdoors and high standard of living, that we can achieve great things at home. My only hope is our lawmakers will share that dream with me and consciously play a part in building our state's legacy in creating a new Alaska experience. Join me in supporting House Bill 252 and tell your lawmakers how you would take this great opportunity to grow your dreams. <laughs> So I did want to mention that Tyler is the 2011 Small Business Administration's Young Entrepreneur of the Year. He was born and raised in Anchorage, and as he mentioned in his video, 
uh, he does want to return to the state. So it's very exciting. It's really exciting to uh, introduce a bill and have people hear about it and then realize that this really can be something quite powerful um, you know, in moving our state forward. So I'm really excited. I think Tyler takes a, a, what could possibly be considered a boring tax bill and make it something that people can really feel the excitement about. And I'm really happy also to mention that the bill has uh, had a hearing in late House Labor and Commerce and it was uh, amended there and that version went to the House Finance Committee. There's a House Finance Committee version that was adopted. It's um, now scheduled to have a second hearing in House Finance this week and then move to the floor. I have uh, 14 co-sponsors of both parties on the bill and that's always important too because I think that uh, having co-sponsors sign on to your bill it really is a, a voice of support and and so I'm hoping that the message that that sends uh, will mean that when it gets to the Senate that this bill will actually uh, move through the Senate and possibly become law this year so uh, with that I, I did want to want to ask for your support for this legislation and if you think it's a good idea contacting uh, people in, you know, on, in the legislature would be great, uh, members of House Finance or pr possibly uh, your legislator, whether it be um, Representative Curtula or Representative Munoz and then your, your senator. I also wanted to mention that I'm happy to have the support of the Alaska State Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they've signed a letter. Uh, the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation testified in support. The Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation is considering a resolution in support of the bill. The University of Alaska Fairbanks Office of Intellectual Property is um, supporting it, or a member is um, supporting it, and then uh, several individuals across Alaska. And so I really am excited about this bill. It's my only bill. Um, it's my feeling that uh, you know, as a legislator, I want to introduce something that really will have an impact, and so I do. I'm, I do think that the bill is um, is one that um, that I'm hoping people can get behind. So, with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and open it up for questions, either on my legislation or any other issue that you feel is important uh, to get a, a response while everyone else is out of town, so they don't hear how I answer. No. <laughs> Mindy? Oh. Maybe I missed it, but what would uh, the, uh, how much would it uh, impact existing state revenues if we were about? Okay, um, that's a great question. Basically what he was asking is about the fiscal note. What's the fiscal impact? What would be the loss of corporate income tax revenue that we receive right now because current existing businesses may qualify under this uh, this bill. And so that, that has two answers really. There's the sort of on the paper answer which we've taken a look at every single um, possible company and then decided, you know, it, it's, it's a really hard question to answer because we don't know the 80 percent working capital requirement which companies are actually using 80 percent of their assets every day. So that number uh, is um, you know, it's, it's a moving target because we don't know. On the other side, in reality, if we go out there and we actually try to find a company that is in Alaska that's doing something like we're talking about, we, there, there aren't any. Um, we've actually um, done a lot of research to try to find companies within the United States that uh, qualify for this. And these are very specific times, types of companies that are doing uh, intellectual property work and IT work and things like that and so uh, we feel like the, that the impact of the state would be um, very little and the fiscal note we received from Department of Revenue said it was indeterminate so it's a win-win in our in our minds <laughs> so Mia as yeah. a legislator then you think that, then that fiscal note is a good response I mean when you say it's indeterminate it's still when you're thinking about it from a practical standpoint, you still want to be able to put some definition, you know, some some amount to that. So how do you get there? I mean, what are you projecting? Well, you know, Ginger, we, we, 
in, in some ways, I feel like this bill is almost one of those bills that you do for a single constituent. I mean, Tyler came to us, and he's got people in the community who understand the importance of this bill, and, and chambers of commerce, and people across the state who under, who've made this a priority. And personally, uh, I, d I don't really see any companies in Alaska that, that fit this description. It's so narrowly defined, and so we really are trying to bring in dollars that aren't here and then keep in mind of course that once they reach a certain size in their company they will become corporate income taxpayers so they will be uh, eventually paying that paying into the state um, general fund as a uh, school teacher and uh, a legislator uh, governor parnell has introduced uh, 30 million dollars to increase fund school funding but not through the base formula where do you stand on that issue? Well, thanks, Brad. Um, you know, my interest, of course, is that we provide, a, you know, educational opportunities so that our young people are graduating with, you know, skills that they can take into the workforce. I would like to see the discussion shift from the base student allocation to the per student funding because the legislature in the last few years has contributed to energy costs and we've also contributed to retirement costs in the tune of 80 million that was taken out of the BSA so essentially translated into an increase which isn't a part of the discussion and if you start asking what is the per student spending uh, the average in, the, in Alaska is 22,000 per student when you consider the federal funds and in some districts it's as high as 55,000 and what we're, and yesterday we heard testimony on the operating budget and house finance and people are very concerned because districts are having to absorb some of these transportation costs and energy costs these are costs that don't that that have to be addressed but don't relate directly to the the uh, classroom and the students learning so what the governor is attempting to do is address some of those costs by the 30 million he's proposing for transportation uh, pupil transportation and energy if you put it into the BSA then essentially that cost is something that you will continue to uh, take on uh, for forever and so when if we go back to what we were talking about earlier we're trying to identify um, you know where those costs are and address them and not necessarily have the discussion be around just one portion of the costs of educating our young people which is the BSA so in my conversations I, t I like to talk about the per student spending uh, and look dr at all of the spending that we're doing and I do think that the governor's uh, proposal will be met um, you know I think in a positive manner because uh, we do hear from districts and school districts across the state that it's their rising energy costs that they can't control, transportation costs which they can't control, and also um, you know uh, in negotiated contract costs that, that they can't control either. So, <laughs> any other questions? No questions about permitting. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about permitting. Um, yeah, but. Um, what is, yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is your view of the world with respect to changes in this oil tax scenario? Uh, well, I was really uh, a uh, strong supporter of the governor's bill that left the House last session. If you look at the progressivity feature in our oil tax, um, leg you know, the oil taxes that we currently have is essentially if you were to use a movie theater analogy essentially what we're doing is if you uh, develop a movie and you sell more movie tickets at a higher price per ticket you make less profit than if you sell fewer tickets at a lower price we've gotten to the point where um, it, as the price of, of oil rises it becomes a disincentive and so I really do feel that that has to be addressed and so we're you know, we're looking and watching what the Senate is doing at, the, you know, at, at the moment. But the Senate bill doesn't really change much, right? The Senate bill does not go as far as it does not address the same uh, issue with the, the aggressive nature that the governor's bill did, which many of us feel needs to, needs to be done. So. And, and a note on that, too, is that a lot of people... Uh, may just think of it as one large system but we've encouraged 
uh, investment and um, you know exploration. We have very good incentives for exploration. And so when you pick up the newspaper and you read that a company is exploring, you think, oh, well, this is good news because then they'll move into production. And that's the problem, is when you start moving into that side, into the production side, the, the tax structure that we have right now does not make us com competitive in an in, in investment climate that we would like to have. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Brad? There was a uh, proposal here a couple of weeks ago that uh, the legislature would give every adult recipient of the uh, permanent fund an energy check. Um, did you, has any legislation like that came to the House? And if so, how would House Finance receive that? You know, I'm, I have not seen legislation to that effect. I think that what we're looking for in terms of energy are more longer term sustainable solutions. And, and in the meantime, we are addressing some programs to help, like, for example, with the energy costs with schools and things like that. But I think that, that, that to me, that's not a solution that I hear being considered in, um, in the legislature at the, at the time, at this time. So. Yes? You had said that that bill was uh, to encourage business to come to Alaska. Um, have you seen any interest of that or uh, any companies that have talked to your office about that? And then the second part of the question is, let's say it gets approved, uh, is there going to be any marketing done to draw those businesses up and bring that interest? Oh, sure. I appreciate the question. You know, at this time, Tyler Arnold's company is really the only one that we're aware of. But uh, Bill Pop with the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation has said that if this bill becomes law, that it will definitely be something that AEDC can use when they're out promoting Alaska and using it as a, as a feature to attract companies. And I think that's why you see a lot of organizations that have a mind to business uh, looking at this bill and taking it on as something that they'd like to see. Because it, it, we do have organizations that are trying to do that to encourage investment in Alaska, and this definitely uh, gives us, us a leg up in terms of the other states. Yes? So, how does, <laughs> 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 how, how does how do your bill compare to the film tax <coughs> incentive? Oh, the film tax? Yeah. Um, well, the film tax, of course, is the state's only transferable tax credit um, that we have, and so, um, they're, they're really quite different, I think. Um, they're also, you know, the film industry, the films that would come up and, pr you know, produce in Alaska, then they leave. And so I think some people are trying to find ways to have that be sustainable. It, with my legislation, if a company comes to Alaska, they're here. They're committed. They bring their families. They're living here. Uh, it's, it's a long-term a solution, I think, um, that, that is, is a long-term solution from the get-go. So I don't, I don't necessarily see the same kinds of uh, questions being raised about this, this particular bill that we, ha that we see with the, the other bill. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your questions and time today. <laughs>